The Lambda Annotations Framework is a programming model that makes it easier to build AWS Lambda functions using .NET. It uses c -sharp custom attributes and source generators to translate annotated Lambda functions to the regular Lambda programming model. In this video, let's learn how to get started with the Lambda Annotations Framework and how it compares with previous ways of building APIs using AWS Lambda functions. We will look at a simple example by building an API that adds two numbers using the regular Lambda programming model and also using the annotations framework. Hello everyone, welcome back to this YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Rahul and I make videos on .NET, Cloud and DevOps. This video is sponsored by AWS and is part of my .NET on AWS series. Without much delay, let's get straight into learning more about Lambda Annotations Framework. Here I have an existing solution in Visual Studio where I have a simple example of a Lambda function which integrates with the API gateway. It sets up an API endpoint to add two numbers. So all this takes in is two numbers and returns the sum as a result. So as you can see here, we have the API gateway proxy request which is the integration object with the API gateway. Now this takes in the value of A and B as path parameters. So you can see I have already code here to extract this value A and B from the path parameters. If none of these values exist, I return a bad request. Now the bad request is a method that returns an API gateway proxy response. It sets up the status code as bad request. Now once it has got the value of A and B, it tries to parse them as integers. And if it doesn't match that again, it returns a bad request. Finally, we get to do the sum, which is A plus B. Now this is the actual business logic that we are interested in, in this Lambda function. We return back the result of the sum as an API gateway proxy response by setting it as the OK status code and also setting up the sum in the body. You can also return the content type. In this case, I've just chosen it to be text slash plain. In a normal API endpoint, this might be application slash JSON. Now, if you look at this Lambda function, all we are interested in is this one line of code as a business logic, which does the sum of two numbers. All the other code that we have here is basically boilerplate code to integrate with API Gateway. You also need to make sure that you are able to extract these values exactly and do the appropriate validation. Now to deploy this further, I need to first deploy this Lambda function alone to the AWS console. So let's switch over to the AWS console and navigate to AWS Lambda. Now here I have the function already deployed, which is the math plus function. Now once we have the math plus function deployed to AWS Lambda, we need to set up the API gateway integration. So to do that, I need to go into API gateway set up a new API gateway endpoint, which I have already done. In this case, it is the math. So if I navigate into that, you can see there is a default stage. Now under the routes, you can see a new route, which is a get route with the values A and B. It's specified by the route slash add. Now this route is set up to integrate with the Lambda function that we created. So you can see there is an integration already configured. So if I hit the configure button, you can see this is integrated with the math plus Lambda function. So anytime you hit the request on this route, it is going to automatically send it to this math plus function, which then reads the data from its path parameters and returns the result appropriately. Now to see this in action, I can go into the stages where the default is deployed, hit the URL, go to slash add and pass in the two numbers. So let's pass slash one and slash one again. This should be returning two, which it does as the body value. Now we can also pass in other values. So let's pass slash 10 and it is going to return back 11 as the answer. Now, if you return back an in invalid value, it is going to return a bad result. Now, if you're completely new to API Gateway and integrating with Lambda, I highly recommend checking out the link video here and learning more about that. It'll also be in the descriptions below. However, the interest of this video is to show how the Lambda Annotations Framework makes it easier to build this exact same Lambda function. The Lambda Annotations Framework was recently made as generally available. This framework uses custom attributes and source generators to automatically generate much of the code that we had to write as boilerplate code. 
Now the Lambda Annotations Framework is available as a NuGet package, and you can also create a template from your Visual Studio projects. So if you right click and say add new project, you can select Annotations Framework as a template. So if you search Annotations Framework, you get the option to start using it as a project template. However, note this template says this is in preview. Maybe they have update soon to make this as general available too. In this video, let's not use this template to start with. Let's use an empty Lambda function project and see how we can build up to using the framework and implementing a new Lambda function. So let's choose the AWS Lambda project template and click next. Now I have these template options in Visual Studio because I installed the AWS toolkit. I have a different video on my channel which shows how to set up the toolkit if you haven't already set it up. Now it asks for the project name. So let's specify Lambda annotation sample dot from scratch because we are building it from the scratch. So let's say create and it pops up the blueprint selection. In this case, we will choose empty function and click finish. Now this is going to create an empty Lambda function inside this existing solution where I had the before annotations project that I just walked you through. So let's close this existing function and let's navigate into the functions.cs. Now this is a default empty Lambda function which simply returns the input as uppercase. To start using the annotations framework, let's first add the NuGet package. So let's say manage NuGet packages. Let's go to browse and let's search for Lambda annotation. Now this is going to show the NuGet package which is the amazon.lambda.annotations. You can see this is of version 1.0.0. So let's click install to install this NuGet package into my new project. Since I'm going to integrate with API Gateway, I will also need the API Gateway Lambda events. So let's add the Amazon.Lambda.API Gateway events and install that as well. Now, once we have both of these NuGet packages installed, let's navigate to our Lambda function and first attribute this function handler with the attribute from the annotations framework. So let's make this as a Lambda function which is coming from the amazon.lambda.annotations framework. Now this attribute is used to decorate the function and specify that this is a Lambda function. Now, as soon as I applied this attribute on this function, it's automatically created this serverless.template file. Now this is a file that's automatically generated, which has the cloud formation template for this particular Lambda function project. Now in here you can expand this and you can see this has set up the handler to be a generated function handler. This uses the exact same name as the function handler that we have. So let's rename this as math plus and save this and come back to serverless.template and you can see the function has changed its name here as well. The C sharp source generators is automatically listening to changes on the function.cs which looks for this attribute and automatically generates this serverless template anytime we make a change. Now you can see this is still a generated code, which we will come to later in this video. Now, if I look at the functions.cs, what I need to do is make this as an HTTP API endpoint. Now to do that, I can use the HTTP API attribute, which is coming from the amazon.lambda.annotations.api gateway namespace. So let's add that in. Let's specify the function. So this is going to be a get method. And let's also specify the template route for this 8-bay endpoint. So let's specify slash add slash a. And let's also take in the b as input. Now we are using the curly braces to specify path parameters. Now to get this value inside our string function, we can simply replace the string input, specify in a and also specify in b. This is going to bind the a and b from the path parameters. So let's make sure to update this comment with the appropriate parameter names. Now, since we have a and b as the integer values, let's simply return the sum as a plus b. Now, in this case, this is going to be an integer again. So let's update the return value to be integer. The function compiles successfully. So let's go to the serverless.template and you can see this is also updated accordingly. So this specifies the path that we specified as the path parameter slash add and with the a and b as the path parameters. And it also specifies this is a get method. If I change this from a get to be a post method and save this and come back, you can see this method name will also get updated in the serverless template. 
but let's come back and leave this as a get method. Now, once we have this set up, we can deploy this Lambda function to our AWS account. So let's go into Solution Explorer, right click on the project and let's say publish to AWS Lambda. Now it prompts for a stack name and also an S3 bucket that it is using temporarily to upload this Lambda package. Now, since this is using the cloud formation template, which is a serverless.template file, it is going to upload this to a bucket and deploy to Lambda from there. So let's give the stack name as maths and let's click publish. Now this is going to upload the serverless template and also the Lambda package to a S3 bucket and deploy the template from there into the cloud stacks. So it's uploaded the template and now it's going through the process of creating the stack. So you can see there is creation in progress of the IAM roles, the stack itself, which is max. And it is also going to create the Lambda function, the API gateway and set up everything for us automatically. So once we wait for this to complete, we can go into the AWS console and look at the stack that it has created. Now it says create complete. So let's go to the AWS console. Let's go into stacks. So let's search for stacks, navigate to that. And here you can see the new stack, which we just created, which is max. So let's navigate into that, go to the resources. And here are the resources that it automatically created. So we have the Lambda function, which is the actual function code. We have an IAM role for this Lambda function. We also have the API gateway that is used to expose the API endpoint. So if I navigate into this API gateway, you can see the stages. It has the default stage automatically created and also it has the route like before. So it has slash add and it has set up the A and B as the path parameters. If I look at the get, it has the integration already configured and it is set to the Lambda function, which is automatically generated name. So let's go into the stages. Let's go to default, navigate to this URL. Let's make sure to open the dev tools because this is going to return application slash JSON. So let's look at the network tab to see the request and response. So let's navigate to slash add. Let's pass one slash one. So this is making the request and returning a 200 and it returns the result as part of the response. So if I was to look at the response, you can see the result as two. Now in this case, the automatic response header is set up as application slash JSON, which is why it is not showing up as the body in the browser. Now, if I pass a different value, so let's say slash 10, it's going to return the value of one slash 10, which is going to be 11. Now in cases where I return an invalid value, so let's say one slash A, it is going to say validation error and it says A and B input is not in correct format. The same is going to apply even if I'm going to pass an invalid value for the integer. It's going to have a validation error and it is not in the correct format. However, as soon as I make this as a valid value, so let's say 100 and make the request, it's going to return 101 as the result. Now using the Lambda annotations framework, all we had to consider was writing the actual business logic. All the boilerplate code is hidden behind these two attributes, which is coming from the annotations framework. We are also able to take in the inputs as the values that this function requires, which is both in integer A and an integer B. This makes it more natural for us c programmers when writing functions than having to deal with specific types from the Lambda programming model. Now let's navigate to this project's bin folder to see what is happening behind the scenes. So let's open this folder in the file explorer. Let's navigate to the bin, debug and .NET 6. So here we have the generated DLLs for this project. So let me open this using the .peak application from JetBrains. So I have the .peak application open. So let me drag and drop this DLL, which is from scratch into here. And let's expand this and let's look at the function class. Here you can see there is a function class which we have written and we also have the function math plus underscore generated. This is the source generated code from the attributes that we have specified in our function class. Now, if I navigate back to Visual Studio and if we go into the serverless.template, you can see this is also referring to the function math plus underscore generated class name. This is the source generated code that we are actually looking at here. So let's double click this. Now inside here, you can see there is an API gateway proxy response and it has the function name as math plus and it takes in the proxy request and the context as parameters. 
Now inside here, we have very similar code that we had manually written in using the default Lambda programming model. So it tries to get from the path parameters, the value A and the value B. It does the validations and returns the appropriate validation error messages. And once that is complete, it does the actual function code, which is going to be adding the two numbers. In this case, it uses the actual function class, which is getting injected in into here and it's creating a new constructor here. So it says function is equal to new function and creates a new instance of our actual function and passes these parameters to it by calling the math plus method. Once it has a response, it passes that back as a response and sets the content type as application slash JSON. Automatically, the source generator has set up all this code for us, making it easier to create this Lambda function to add two numbers. Similarly, in your business case, you can use the values from the body and map it to appropriate .NET types. We will see that in a future video where we will build a CRUD API using the annotations framework. Now, if I navigate back to Visual Studio and to the function, you can also set up extra properties on the Lambda function itself on this attribute. So if you go to the template, you can see this is by default setting up the memory size to be 256 and the timeout to be 30. Now, if you want to increase those values, you can pass them as attributes in the Lambda function attribute. So let's specify the timeout to be 100 seconds in this case. And if I save it and come back to the serverless template, you can see the timeout is now updated and it sets it as 100 seconds. Now, if I deploy this to Lambda by right clicking on the project and saying publish to Lambda, and let's specify the same stack name and the S3 bucket and say publish. Now, this is going to update the existing Lambda function and change the default time from 30 to be 100. So if I go into the cloud formation, into the actual Lambda function, this might be still the old function code while the deploy is happening. So if I navigate into the configuration and go to general configuration, you can see the timeout from the previous Lambda function, which is 30 seconds. Now, if I go back to Visual Studio, the update is still in progress. So let's refresh this. And right now, this the update is complete. So if I come back to the Lambda function and refresh this page, you can see that the timeout is now updated to be one minute and 40 seconds, which is 100 seconds in total. Similarly, there are a few other properties that you can control by the Lambda function attribute, which includes the timeout, the memory size, the policies that you need to set up for the role, etc., and also the resource name. So if you want a specific resource name, you can use that as well. I hope this helps you to get started with the Lambda annotations framework. We saw how easy it is to generate an API endpoint integrating with the API gateway using the annotations framework. All the boilerplate code that we had to write previously is now hidden under the two attributes that is provided from the annotations framework. Anytime you want to see the underlying code, you can also explore the DLL generated and see what is happening behind the scenes. This makes creating APIs backed by Lambda functions much more seamless and easier. In a future video, we will look at how to build a CRUD API using rich .NET types using the annotations framework. If you want to be notified when that video comes out, please make sure to hit the subscribe button. If you like this video, please make sure to hit the like button as well. Thank you and see you soon in the next video.